Good morning. Welcome to an EBS instructional video. The following video will show you how to easily connect the EPX400 communicator to a Paradox Magellan 5050 control panel. Go to ebssmart.com. Log in to the installer area where you'll find access to all the necessary materials for EBS products. Select Smart Communicators. Then select Instructions and Manuals and the communicator model you're interested in. For the video, we've opted for the Dual Power TEPX400. Download Quick Guide Installation Manual. In the manual, you'll find all the necessary information needed for the installation starting with the wiring diagram through the programming process and ending with the registration in the mobile app. Start the installation by connecting the EPX400 communicator to the Paradox panel. Connect the wire from the AUX terminal of the control panel to the ground connector. Then connect the wire from the AUX Plus terminal of the control panel to the Plus ACU EPX400 connector. Next, connect the communicator's first output labeled OUT1 to the Paradox panel's input labeled Z1. Connect the PGM1 output of the Paradox panel to the communicator input labeled IN1. The next step is to program the Paradox panel. To do so, enter installer mode by pressing enter and typing in a four-digit code. By default, the code is four zeros. To program output one, go to section 220, enter 021201, then 021101. Confirm by pressing enter and exit to the main menu using the clear button. To program input one, go to 001 and then 251. Confirm by pressing enter and exit the installer mode by pressing clear twice. You can now proceed to configure the EPX400 communicator using EBS Config 2.0 software. This software can be found on our website. Go to the Repository tab and then to the Configurators folder, where you'll find the EBS Config 2.0 software in the latest version available. Download the software and install it. To install the EBS Config 2.0 software, Go through all the steps in the installer one by one. The first thing you need to do in the software is to set up a connection to the communicator. To do this, you need to go to the right side of the screen and select Connection Settings. Click Add and select your preferred method of connecting to the device. For the purpose of this video, we opted for the GD Prog Programmer. Enter the name of the connection and select the system port to which the programmer is connected. Then confirm by pressing OK. This connection will automatically be selected to establish communication with the device. You can now proceed to program the EPX400 communicator. To do this, select New Configuration, then Dual Power T. Go to the Inputs, Outputs tab, then input IN1, and change its mode to NO. Then go to Output 1, Advanced Output Control, Events, Inputs, Input Violation, IN1 Input Violation. Enable Output Response. Then go to Input Return. 
In one, input return. Disable output response. To establish a connection between EPX400 and a monitoring station or a mobile application server, a communication channel must be defined. Select your preferred communication channel. For the purpose of this video, we chose the mobile network. Go to the mobile network tab and enter the parameters of the communication server. i.e. its address and communication port. Specify the parameters of the access points as well. The configuration template created this way can now be sent to the device. To do this, select the Send Configuration option on the right side of the screen. Enter the service code of the device. The default code is four ones. Then press Send. The device has been successfully programmed and will begin to connect to the communication server. You can now proceed to register the EPX400 communicator in the EBS Security Mobile app. Go to the Registration option. Enter the data of the application user, that is, the email, and create a password. Then select the Transmitter tab from the top of the screen. Enter the serial number of the device and create an access code. Once the device is properly registered in the app, go to Settings. Then Object Settings and edit Object. Go to the bottom of the screen and under Arming Control. Select Output and Input 1. This will enable remote arming and disarming of the control panel.